Okay. Um, so uh, let's finish looking at our map in here. Uh, so for your homework, you were to finish watching the uh, um, the videos, and um, I'm, I think I mentioned this before. I think tile to Unity has changed a little bit. Um, so we'll figure that out. I think it was it shouldn't be a huge huge deal. Um, but in any case, the uh, um, the first video we finish up. Uh, kind of talked about, let's see, there is my map up here. Yeah, so we have our starting point for our map here. So for your homework, you were supposed to build a more involved uh, map. Um, let's go ahead and put a little terrain in here, just kind of following what the rest of this tutorial had you do. Uh, and then we had some collisions. So I think basically what did the tutorial have you do? Put uh, um, some dirt. I think around in some places and then place some trees and that kind of stuff. And then they looked at putting collisions on some of those things. Now we already put collisions on um, these uh, kind of squares in here. We went through and we did the collision editor for uh, this guy. Oh, I'll have to remind me where the collision editor for that dude was. So we clicked on that. It wasn't in the drop down. Was it one of these dudes up here? Where was the collision editor for this? It was under the edit tiles. Edit tiles uh, in here. Can we go to the bottom. One of these dudes uh, edit tiles set. Uh, uh, so we clicked on one of these guys and that we could add a collision thing to it. Uh, and you'll notice that these icons matched an icon that was up above before uh, on the other screen. And they actually show that, I think, on the uh, tutorial, right? The second video, where they show you could actually draw collisions on there. Um, but one of the things that they uh, showed in that second video was um, maybe a weakness of this built-in collision editor is you don't actually see collisions they are set up on the objects so those objects get uh, uh collision boxes kind of set up on them but when you put them into your scene you don't kind of see where the collisions actually live right so now if we come back here to our game map do we necessarily care if we can see the collisions in here probably not the end of the world as long as you know we kind of assume that, oh yeah we've put collisions on the water or the very least do we even need to have collisions in the water if we can't get to the water something like that so one thing you could do is you could surround this guy with um, some collision boxes and a, a trick that they did in the second video that I actually I like just from a visual perspective is they created a, what was it was it a red block I think so they had like a kind of a red block or we could just pick one of our guys here that we don't think we're going to use for something else <laughs> and put a collision on that and wherever we paint that guy we know there's going to be a collision there and then what we'll do is just turn the mesh render off for that in our actual game so we don't have to look at you know some weird symbol noting showing uh collisions like actually maybe these guys right here would make a pretty good thing they're just flower things but do we have anything cooler um, but in any case, you then get a limitation, and that limitation ends up being uh, if you don't put. I don't remember. Have we? I think we've done collisions in all these all these different shapes. Yeah, I remember we did collisions in all of them. So if we put a collision kind of uh, square around this guy, then you won't be able to go right up to the water. You kind of are going to be stuck a distance away from it. So maybe that's not what you actually want. So for some of these things, maybe you do want the actual collision boxes around the uh, the water. I'm not sure you actually need it in the water if you can't get to it. But regardless, um, you won't actually be able to see those in Unity. You'll just have to know that they're there. But for other collisions, if you want to limit where they can go in the map or or things like that, or certainly for the uh, uh, the trees. Um, you might want to have some interesting looking collision boxes to keep people from uh, walking in there. Uh, so let's go down here and let's uh, create our terrain situation. So we're going to go to terrains and uh, let's create a new terrain. Where's my button for creating new terrain? 
I have to create an under tile. Under the edit tile set, and then there's other sizes. So they've moved everything into edit tile set. Okay. Okay, then we have a, you said we're having a terrain setting in here? You said you hit where the little the box that looks like a picture on top next to the collision engine. This dude? Nope, over. That guy. That guy. Looks like a picture. Okay. Then on the right side. Then we can add terrain. So, okay. I wonder why they did that. Because they still let you erase it, it looks like, in the main mm -hmm. main level. All right, so I'm pretty sure the tutorial called this like dirt or something like that. All right, so we'll call that guy uh, dirt. Now, we did actually create the terrain in here, too. Yeah, it looks like we do. So, uh, and we got to get it so it curves on those. So we have to do the corners first. Oh, I'm botching it. How do I undo? Maybe I can't. Maybe I just need to. So you want these guys. So there we go. I can get that undone. So let's get them all selected first. Unselect that. Possibly not. Okay, then for the turns, so we want to have, so this guy should be a full square. Then we have, I'm trying to remember how it ends up going. Then we could put the curves, I think it's is it like that. Oh, I can't put it back after the fact. That's good. Let's just start from scratch. Put that back in. Call it dirt. All right, I want that. I want that, I want that, I want that, and I want that. Something like that would probably give me some sort of reasonable terrain. So when I get to the edges, it'll curve around and uh, that kind of stuff. I think they did go over and grab a couple of things here for straightaways, but let's just forget about it for right now. Um, so we have our dirt terrain, and that guy looks like it's already saved. So I can just, uh, well, actually, no, it's not saved. So we'll save our base tile set, go back here, then my terrain should show up. Okay, there's my dirt. So I'll select that. Not exactly what we were looking for, but eh, whatever. Just we have patchy dirt that was supposed to have curves and stuff, and that's probably where that extra piece was. Just call it good enough. All right, so we have weird dirt. <laughs> it's that's the uh, agriculture uh, agri <laughs> agriculture area. They this is where they get sod. There's going to be a golf course in the northeast. All right. Um, so now let's go ahead and um, do the little mimic thing of the uh, box colliders uh, that we can see. We already have colliders here on our water, but just for um, some additional stuff. And we'll go ahead and throw some trees in here too. All right, so we got this. 
Well, they put trees in two separate pieces. It's uh, not that nice. So we're going to have cactuses in ours. So I'm just going to throw, um, actually, we need to go to tile set editor. Because we can go ahead and draw collisions on individual dudes if we want. Actually, does it look like we can even do that here? So let's go back into tile set editor. We will click on our cactus. Oh, I'm still in, am I in terrain? What am I on? I'm in terrain. This is the collision editor dealie. So I'll click on my cactus. We'll draw our square around that guy. Notice we can draw some different shapes. We want our collision thing to be different, but we'll just put a big square around this guy. All right, so now he should have a collision. Okay, and do we still have collisions on these guys? Looks like I might not have saved those when we did them, so whatever. Um, okay, so we have our cactus, and uh, I'll just kind of place these guys in some different places. I'm not going to put too many of them. All right, call that good. All right, so we have uh, a whole bunch of cacti. Um, are these, oh well, no, they're not quite menorahs, but they're almost menorahs. Okay, so let's have our collision um, deal here. Uh, so I'm looking for one of these squares that I don't think I'll use. What are those guys? Like a green canopy or something? Oh, that made like a storefront. Yeah, we might use that. Well, these guys look kind of the same. I don't think we'll use fire. So we'll use one of these fire guys. So let's go ahead and do a collision thing for him. And he'll just be our, we'll use the far left one for the fire um, rather than creating a new tile set for a, um, just a, a red box in our example here. So I'll select this. We'll go to terrain. We'll click on fire dude. I think that was this one. Right in the terrain editor. No, I'm sorry. I don't want terrain. I want the collision box. Click on fire dude. There's my, well, it actually almost looks like a fire dude. Select him. So there's my collision box on him. Save the tile set, which is what we didn't do for the water. So now we come back here, and whenever we use that left dude here, we can now draw uh, collisions in. So I'll go ahead and do that. We already have a collision around the, uh, the cacti. So they won't be able to get very close to the water here. All right, and then um, let's thicken the, um, they zoomed out some, right? Oh, we'll just put a, we'll put a big box around the, the world. Kind of creating an, it'll ultimately be an invisible uh, 
area where you can't walk to. And then if you wanted to, you can kind of have a, a zone down here that we say is, is not walkable. You don't necessarily need to color it all in because it's you won't be able to get in there. But if you want to really mark it off as not being walkable, there's our kind of terrain for for that. Okay. Um, or our collision boxes for that. Now, remember, we're going to go in and once we have our prefab for this, we're going to turn off the sprite renders for all these things. Okay. Now, one issue we have, and we probably already kind of messed it up, is... Um, Whoa, definitely messed that up. There we go. Is uh, we go back here, and I assume is this going to, it's in our layers. So right now, all of our stuff lives in this single tile layer, right? So um, it's going to be actually a little bit difficult for us to find these individual collision boxes. Uh, so we've already set those things up as collision boxes. So we want to come in here and we want to create some new uh, layers. So let's create maybe a, uh, an, I think in the tutorial they did an object layer for all the uh, uh, the trees. Um, I don't think we'll actually need that uh, in here. We can create it if we want. Um, so we'll call it the object layers. This is where you maybe would put your trees and stuff. Um, they used it for uh, putting collision boxes specifically on the trees, but not on other things. And they also used it for creating the uh, sorting layer for those trees so you can kind of walk behind them and, and that kind of stuff. So in actuality, if I want to do this right, how far back will it let me go? I think we're okay with that. These will be all tile layers. So let me just go ahead and just quickly duplicate what I just did. So there's our object layer. Um, let me make sure that we didn't just undo the collider box on our Cacti. Uh, is there a way to tell if it still has the collision on it? So it is here right now? Okay, so that didn't get undone then. Good. Okay, so now I'm working in my object layer. So if I turn off the uh, tile layer, we see that, that all that stuff belongs to that. I'm working in the object layer. We'll go ahead and grab our cacti. We'll paint these guys on here again. Uh, and I am dealing with... Here's my mini map. There's those dudes. Why am I not painting? Could have selected an object. Why am I not painting that object? These are for collision things. Insert tile. Oh, that doesn't really look like what I want. Why aren't I painting? Oh, they're still not going in the right place. All right, I can put it in my tile layer. Is my object layer a new a wrong kind of layer? 
So let's create a new tile layer and we're going to name this object. Layer because tile layer is the only kind of layers you can paint in. Then we'll paint some of our trees. Put a little kind of forest of cacti down there. All right, then we'll add another layer. We'll call this guy collision layer. And this is the guy that we'll use our, so let's just make sure if I turn off. So optic layer turns off the trees, tile layer turns off everything but the trees, and collision layer is where my uh, um, little fire guys are gonna live for kind of showing some collision boxes. And it was the left one here. So I'll just draw my big, perfect outline and then we'll draw around the water here and into the water some as you can see when I'm making maps it's all about precision <laughs> um, okay and then let's uh, well, those that forest should be kind of self-sustaining. We'll just have kind of a a weird area here of uh, just you can't walk here for a random reason. There's nothing there, but it's like an invisible forest just to kind of uh, drive the the point home. All right, so we're going to call this our uh, our map. Um, so we have our collision layer, we have our object layer, we have so if we turn off collisions. We see all those dudes turn turn uh, uh, apart or go go away. Object layer shows our trees disappear. Tile layer um, lets us to get rid of the tiles. Um, so this is going to allow us to more easily go and turn off renderers inside of. Uh, um, inside of unity so let's assume that this is a kind of a decent map i'll go ahead and save my map here and then did we already download the uh, tile to unity thought we did let's double check so i've done a bunch of vr stuff on here recently too don't see it in there so let's assume the answer is no let's go download that guy i don't think this is the right one is it Is this the one they used that they linked from the thing? It is? Okay. Um, so, do they have an installer for it or do they grab it from the GitHub? Okay, so here is this guy. Where are my installers? Download now, probably. Okay, so um, here's an installer, here's a zipped one. This is for Windows, let's not. No thank you, go to downloads. All right, so let's grab the 64-bit installer. Um, if you want to use the 32-bit installer, that's fine as well. If you're using an older version of Windows, use the 32-bit just in case. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I'm definitely running a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'll download here. Uh, looks like we did already install it. 
So we must have already had that uh, that guy. Are you sure you want to cancel? Yes, let's cancel. Finish. Tiled to Unity. Doesn't look like. That's what I read yesterday. That it thought it was already installed. Um, how you have to do this? That you have to use the zip one. Really? Well, that doesn't seem acceptable. Let's remove it for no good reason. Okay, we've done that. Then let's install it. So we'll put it in tile to Unity. Click install. Did we previously install it? Do you remember? How do we download it? I don't know if we installed it. Okay. Actually, when I try to install it, it would always give me an error. And um, I found a different folder that already had it in it. So. I wonder if it comes with tiled now because it seems like they've upgraded it to a GUI at least Do they give us a desktop icon That's for updates. Is the bigger problem you just can't find it? It doesn't like give you a uh, uh, installer or like a, an icon anywhere. So you downloaded the zip, so you just had something to double click on inside the folder, right? Because right. I look like it installed it. Tile to Unity, Tile to Unity. All right, so here's the, the folder. I just had to, well, we'll make sure it works first. I'll add a shortcut. Okay. Um, now they went in and I think he did some setting stuff, right, for the uh, um, the sort layers and, and that kind of stuff for your, your collisions. Uh, we won't do that right now. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to choose where we're going to export, um, from tile maps editor at this command line. Okay. So that adds that. So let's go to open tile file and do, where do we store our file let's open up tile here game maps tmx is that this guy down there gets game maps we put it on the desktop okay so we'll go to our desktop and there's our game map look open so that is the guy we're opening let's preview map so there's my giant map, call that good enough. All right, and then we hit our export button. Uh, Unity project export path is invalid. Oh, I need to pick the export path. Um, so I'm actually gonna put this on the desktop for right now. I can't just choose desktop. 
Well, so it actually wants me to find the export file name inside of the folder for that guy. So C drive, program files, tile to Unity. I thought it, there was going to be a prefab file in there. Let's cancel this. Unity export file in Unity project. Okay, so we have to go to where our Unity project is. Where have we been storing our Unity project? Let's just open up this. Thought I had it on the desktop. So this is. We create a new. Oh, we actually haven't even created a project yet, have we? Yeah, okay. So we'll create a new project and we're going to call this guy um, 275FF for Final Fantasy. We'll put this guy in my Dropbox. Okay. Well, and we're going to select 2D for it. Create project. Let that guy finish launching. Okay. And now let's go to my Dropbox. We have to export it first. Select the tile to Unity export.txt file in your Unity project. Does it want me to bring it in first? <coughs> Okay, so I imported it first. So it looks like that's the process. So I imported the tile to Unity thing into my project. So let me cancel that just so you see what I did. So I went to help, which seems a very strange place to put it. Import Unity package to project. Um, this is before I've actually exported the prefab. So there's like a special package that comes with tile to Unity. So I'll import this guy into my project. So that's going to put it inside the asset folder. So there's my tile to Unity. Now this guy should have the export path in it. So I'll go back here. I'll go to export. I'll go to my Dropbox. I'll go to 275 Unity, 275 FF, go to Assets, Tiled to Unity. Uh, my guess is it'll be in Prefabs. No. Oh, it's just in here. So I'll select the Tiled to Unity export, hit Open. Then I should export that. Seem to work. Come in here to our game. It's updating because there's been a new thing created in there. I'll go to Tile to Unity, go to Prefabs. Here's my game map prefab it created for me. I'll drag it out here, and it's, uh, as you saw in the uh, uh, the video, it creates this giant, this giant thing. So let's just scale that guy down so we can sort of kind of see it. What do I have to do by 0 0.6, uh, what, 0 0.625? Mm -hmm. 
0 0.0625, so that's 1 16th. I kind of put it in the realm of okay. And then let's move this dude so our stuff is kind of in our, our camera zone, something like that. All right, so then we first start it. There we have a map of stuff. All right, and uh, we kind of need to put a dude out here that we can make move, right? Um, so that way we have something. But you didn't need to do that for your homework. You just needed to have the map. Um, so for right now, let's just kind of look at this uh, real quick. So if I go in here, and here's my object layer. So uh, that should be my trees. And here's my collision layer. So these are the uh, the actual dudes that are the colliders. So I can see when it's like that. But if I come in here to the um, actual collision, okay, here's the, the dude. This is what he looks like. The roguelike sheet transparent. And I just turn off the mesh renderer for that guy. Now they'll all disappear, but they're still in the scene. Um, so an, kind of an important thing to remember there is Make sure you turn off the mesh renderer for it instead of this. If you click on the collision layer and then you hit this box up here under the inspector and you turn that off, you'll get the uh, sense that, oh, I, turn, I, I hid them, but you actually removed them from the scene. They're no longer part of the scene if you do that. So you definitely want the collision layer to be part of the scene. You just want to go to the actual picture, this rogue-like sheet transparent guy, and just disable his mesh renderer so you don't see it, but they're still there. Okay? Now, for all of these guys that are uh, in there, and actually let's go to, here's the collision on them. So notice that, uh, well, it actually created a polygon collider 2D instead of a box collider. It's fine. Um, I wonder why. Maybe it, I didn't quite draw a good box. <laughs> Off of it, you, do you know why? It probably defaults to that because you carry polygons rather than uh, Yeah, just maybe, maybe just thinks everything must be something of type polygon. Okay. I don't know that you're wrong. So it's that sounds reasonable enough. Um, I still would think that it would use a the most efficient collider. Well, you would hope it would use the most efficient collider, and a box collider would be the most efficient. So I feel like there's at least a chance that had I drawn a better box around the 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 tile, that it would have detected it as a box collider. But whatever, we have a collider. <laughs> we have a two D collider we can bump into. So now we just need a dude that can bump into that. Now, um, we shouldn't need to make these guys uh, rigid bodies because they're going to be invisible. So when we bump into those guys, we don't want to be able to interact with the body. We just want to have a – but actually, if we want physics to play into it, I think we will need to make them rigid bodies. Because we can't have a rigid body bumping into a box collider and have physics. No, we can. That'll work. But our dude needs to be a rigid body. Otherwise, he physics won't play in. So we're, we're, we're fine. So we'll uh, let's leave them up for now. That way we can see them. <laughs> so we can get there. And let's get a dude into our scene here. All right. And we need our, uh, our, our hero here. Um, did was, was there a character looking dude in um, all right stop the recording by accident okay let's go back in here so let's do um, player 2d tile set There's 2D RPG tiles. I want a player that has some animations associated with it. Well, here's here's Nora. 
Man, can we really go from zombie baby to that? I don't know if we can do that, but we'll give it another 45 seconds of searching. Otherwise, we'll default back to Nora because this does have <laughs> this has all the uh, it appears that Nora has all the turns that we'll need for, for this. Oh, my gosh, I'm out of stuff. <laughs> this is going to be disappointing if I have to default to Nora. Um, 2D player tile set. Big money, big money. Okay, here's open game art. That's where we just were, right? Yeah, we can't do that. Well, this is the actual asset store for Unity. Oh, here's a hand-painted town tile set. All right, whatever. We'll use Nora. <laughs> it's done. All right. It's probably going to work out the best for us anyways. It had all the right um, turns and stuff. It's just very disappointing. Yeah. Well, if I can bring myself to the... Oh, they say it looks great. Um, downloads... Where's my download button? Do I, have to, do I have to log in to download? Oh, this one. The, the link for it. Direct. Seems like these contacts are really working. <laughs> Just solid is what we're working with here. All right. So let's go ahead and bring that uh, PNG into our Unity set here. So we'll import new asset, go to my downloads folder, go to Nora. All right, and there is my person thingy. Um, okay. And we need to slice this, right? It's not giving me individual ones here. Sprite mode, multiple, and pixels per unit. Um, or we're gonna, do we know how many pixels per unit this has? I have to be making a, it probably tells me on that page. Nope, we definitely have a space between them. So I guess let's make a guess. We'll try 16 by 16 first. Okay, so we're gonna say, this doesn't look like the right screen. Before we have to spray editor button. Oh, and this lets us drag the size. Okay, so it looks like maybe 45 by 45. So there's a single, it was actually taller. It's uh, 48 by 65 with a one by one border it looks like forty eight by sixty five okay so I'm gonna 
close this. Don't save. Go back into the sprite editor. We're going to do So left and right. Why don't I remember what the settings are for this? Well, it's giving me the, the right width. And then I want to slice it, but why won't it? Oh, that they'd apply first. You also need to select multiple before you go into the sprite under. Right now it's only doing something. What do you mean I need to select multiple? So if you look on the right side of your screen where it says sprite mode single. Oh, oh, oh. I thought we had done that before and hit apply. I don't know. It's still the same. No, you're right. It does. But when we were out here, remember before, I set it to multiple. And then when I clicked the sprite editor, it asked me, do you want to apply that? I said apply. No, it says multiple. That's weird. Well, whatever. I probably just screwed it up. So let's see. So we tried to let it figure out on its own, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is that theoretically should be sliced now. Yeah, yeah, fine. And do we have individual? All right, looks okay now. Oh, it's weird. I, mean, I didn't remember anyways, but I knew it had to be multiple. I would have thought it would have let me down a path, and I kind of remembered the apply thing. But regardless, um, okay, so we have – doesn't look like we really have a, a walking animation, but that's okay for this. Really, we just want to have a directional um, type thing, so – See, so we're going to do that with an animation when we move from, I think, so this is going to be up, down, left, right. Oh, these are walking. So this guy, are the feet in different positions here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need, they could have put them next to each other. All right, so can I select multiple ones like this? So I'm going to. Hit that, then I'm going to hit that. Oh, excellent. Can I reorder? I cannot. It seems good. Because I need an animation out of this dude. This dude and this dude in order to give Nora walking up animation. Are you sure you get What's this? I can select them. What did you press? Control? Um, or did you just click? Match, yeah, so it should be the control button. Yeah, oh, <laughs> what's up? That was the first thing I tried. Oh my gosh, just. Complete incompetence today. All right, so <laughs> I got three to you. I just call them the way I see them, I suppose. All right, so I selected the three things walking. Uh, we'll just call this uh, up, down, left, right for our three things. So we'll go ahead and drag this into our scene somewhere. Um, and then let's go ahead and let's create a folder for animations uh, in here. So I'm going to create a new folder. Animation. Go ahead and open that, and we're going to call this. Uh, what was her name? Nora. Is that a show? Oh no, it was Dora the Explorer, right? Oh uh, yeah. So Nora up. Yeah, whatever. It's just an upsetting turn of events so far. 
All right, so that's Nora up, and um, let's just go ahead and create the four different ones, and then we'll just delete all but one of the controllers that gets generated. So let's do Nora down. Okay, we'll drag that up there. This is going to be inside of animation. This is going to be Nora down. Uh, then we're going to do Nora left. The worst part about this whole thing is Nora is going to look so much better than that baby did, which is just like rubbing salt in a wound. Is what it, all right, so it's going to be Nora left. Okay, and then we have Nora right. Okay, so there's my different Noras. Let's go to our animation and let's just get rid of three of the controllers. I'm gonna rename a controller um, called, let's call it Nora. Okay. And then this Nora is somewhere on the screen there. Okay, so I'm going to delete these uh, other three Noras from our um, from our map because we only need one on there, and then we just change the animation. So we'll delete those. Um, let's just call this Nora. Uh, actually, we should well, we'll call it Nora. Let's just stick with the. All right, so Nora is very tiny. So let's scale Nora up. Can I, is she behind the sort layer for right now? So order in layer, if we click on the game map, um, let's see, why don't we just say Nora, is in a let's go to the layer editor let's add a sorting layer and we'll add player We'll click on Nora again. Okay, there we go. So now we can see Nora, and she's giant. So let's take her back to one by one, and let's see how giant she still is. Oh, she's not giant. All right, let's move her kind of near one of these fire things so we can make her kind of similar size to the fire thing as we. Almost there, maybe four by four. Pretty good. Yeah, let's just roll with it. All right, so that's Nora. 
let's put her on the map somewhere in the scene. All right, so there's Nora hanging out by the water. Um, okay, so uh, now we want to add the uh, animations with the triggers to uh, Nora. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to the project. Here's our Nora animations. We'll just double click on. Why does that show up down there? I want it up there so I can see it. There we go. All right, so we have Nora up, which is interesting. We don't have a Nora. Nora's going to start facing in some direction, one of the four directions. There is no such thing as idle like we had in platform. So we'll have to just decide what's maybe Nora is always facing upwards as the starting point, um, because that's what we're currently looking at. So we'll go ahead and throw Nora down, Nora left, and Nora right, Nora right in here. I'm going to organize it like it looks like a joystick type thing. All right. And then we'll create some transitions. Well, before we have transitions, we need to create our parameters. So we'll create some triggers. So we'll have the up trigger. We'll have the down trigger. We will have the left trigger. We will have the right trigger. Okay, now we need to create transitions from all the different things. So from Nora up, we can create a transition to left. We can create a transition to right. We can create a transition to down. Under what circumstances do we go left? We go left when triggers left. We go down when triggers down. Doesn't Nora look creepy down there? Look at this. Well, we might get, be getting back in dead baby territory. Down, okay, and this will be Nora right. All right, then we'll do the same thing from the other one. So from Nora right, we can go up. We can go down, we can go left. Under what circumstance do we go up? When it's up, down, when we have a trigger down, and left, when we have a trigger left. Then from Nora down, we can go right, we can go up, we can go left, we go left when it's trigger left, we go up when it's trigger up, and we go right when it's trigger right, and then from left we can go up, we can go right, we can go down, we go up when it's trigger up, we go right when it's trigger right, we go down when it's trigger down. All right, so that should be our controller for Nora. Okay, so now we need to create a controller script for Nora to actually make her move, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go into assets, just close this here. I'm gonna create a folder. And we'll, that underscore scripts thing, that way it shows up first in your list if you want to just name it scripts that's fine um so i'll call it that we will um create a c-sharp script and let's call this 
nor a movement. So we're going to try to be a little bit more compartmentalized with our scripts um, in uh, this game. So, you know, uh, the first eight weeks, we kind of were just hodgepodging, putting things into scripts. Now we want to start thinking about scripts as kind of a reusable resource. Um, obviously, Nora movement, that's going to be our player movement. So that's not something we're going to necessarily reuse. So we could put other things in there. In fact, maybe we even call this um, Nora controller, something like that. So this is all the top level control stuff for Nora movement, things like that. Um, but as we put other things into our game and we start transitioning into like the fight scene, for example, um, we might want enemies to all kind of act certain ways, right? Um, so we might want to make a generic script that can work on multiple enemies. And maybe we have two or three scripts that work on enemies, whether it's a magic user or something like that. So we'll kind of think through that process as we get there, but let's try to be more compartmentalized on our, uh, script. For those of you who were at the, um, uh, the hackathon boot camp thing last night, or I'll, I'll link the video um, after class today. Uh, you'll see on there that uh, kind of we, we use this tool called VRTK in there. We're, we're working with Unity. We're just using the 3D version, 3D mode of Unity. And VRTK has a whole bunch of pre-built scripts for doing things in VR. So you want to be able to pick stuff up, you drag the pick stuff up script in there. You want to be able to teleport, you drag the teleport script in there. You want pointers, drag the pointer script in there. So having a whole bunch of scripts that give us kind of generic abilities makes us, gives us the ability to have our, uh, our, our game grow quickly. So that's kind of the trend we're looking at here. We used the tile map thing. Yeah, it's a little clunky and you got to figure out the right thing to use it. At some point, they're going to, I already downloaded the beta for this. So at some point I'll take a look at it, but the next version of Unity is going to have a tile editor built into it. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's going to solve the same problem. You just won't have to do the tile to unity dealy flippy whatever um but you know the point is is that the more th the more we can focus on the game and the less we have to focus on little mechanics the kind of the better from a game designer perspective all right so for our nor controller we want to have the ability to respond to our uh, arrow keys for our uh, our axis so if we want um well let's just go in here and we'll uh so I'll open up this script because uh, we're going to do a uh, get axis horizontal, get axis vertical. And I'm going to go ahead and give myself a public float speed for Nora. So we can kind of decide how fast Nora must be. And uh, then let's go ahead. I'm just going to jump on Google real quick. And let's just do unity axis movement. That'll just give us the get axis things for horizontal and vertical. All right, so in update, we'll go ahead and get the, um, I don't really like their variable names here, but whatever. So. Okay, like almost none of that. So this is the axis movement 2D. This should give us a better base example as the internet goes down. I think this is 3D again. Yeah, and that's for uh Think a ship. Oh, so it's this one site. Oh, here we go. All right, because uh, our axis, our movement's a little bit different here because we did uh, on the platform our movement was left and right. Uh, we didn't do the up and down uh, axis because that was our jump, right? That was based on a space bar. Now we don't. There's there isn't a such thing as jumping in a um, an open world like this, where you know now we are literally moving in a grid. I do not want Euler angles. All right. 
let's just write it ourselves. So we'll use this uh, baseline just to get the two axes for what they did in here for their player controller. So we'll get, uh, well, actually, this is going to be relatively good, actually, I think. Let me just steal this code, and then we'll, we'll update it. All right, I'm going to put this inside of update instead of fixed update. Um, probably does not matter. Um, actually, let's go ahead and do it inside of fixed update. In a 2D game with modern hardware, we can probably assume that uh, we're going to be clearing 60 frames a second. So I don't think we need, especially in a game like this. Um, when we think about uh, movement in a platformer, Precise movement is very important, right? Uh, and I know a lot of you haven't played Final Fantasy, just as a, a quick reminder here. Um, let me just pop up one of those Final Fantasy videos. And you'll see that the uh, um, we get a out there in the open world. Let's see if we can get him out there in the world. He's going into shops and stuff like that. Okay, so now he's out there in the world. So this is like on our map. All right, so let's just pause this and back it up here a little bit. So as he's walking around here on the map, um, so this would kind of be our map. These are some collision stuff that's over here. So you can't go there. You're kind of in a, I don't know, like a canyon or something. Um, actually, it looks like you're in a castle, but whatever. Um, so you're moving around in here, and your guy isn't having to, like, dodge enemies out there in the, in, in the, the open world. So you don't need this really nimble movement in Final Fantasy. Your, your movement is much more based on... Uh, um, uh, is, is much more based on just accuracy, moving up, down, left, right. And at random times, you enter into a fight. So we hit this again. You'll see as he comes out here. So is he going to leave town here in a second? he's walking around you'll see that randomly he doesn't even see an enemy he'll all of a sudden just enter battle all right so he didn't know there was an enemy there so we're gonna have to create that uh, uh that effect in ours where as he's walking around the map there's random points in time where a fight starts all right and what will that do now we're gonna transition to a brand new scene Okay, so when that fight starts, we're in a brand new scene, and this scene has a very, uh, there isn't really movement in this scene. The, this scene is all about clicking on what you want to do or using the arrows to select what you want to do. And then you're, you know, when your guy, when it's his turn, he just steps forward and does his thing, whether it's slash with a sword or shoot some uh, a fireball, whatever it is, take a potion. Um, he does his thing. It may or may not impact the uh, enemy. Then he backs up. It's no longer his turn all right so this is a turn-based type thing so our movement in this is less uh twitchy right in a mario type game in a platformer we need to have that really responsive movement so we can jump and dodge enemies and you know all in real time so this is going to be a, a different type of uh different type of animal all right so going back in here i'll go ahead and paste in our fixed update so we have a, a move horizontal move vertical and um this dude does not have a rigid body associated with it yet for our, our player. Um, 
So just talking about it out loud here, um, just because we're almost out of time, I'll, uh, we'll have you do this for your uh, homework assignment, of course. And it shouldn't be drastically different than what we've done for movement in the past. So this gets our movement movement horizontal. This gets us mo movement vertical. Then we're going to create a, um, well, it creates a, a vector three here. Um, but the, uh, um, it's, this is for was for 3D movement. So this guy probably needs to be a vector two just on the uh, X and Y. We're not moving on the Z. Um, move vertical in 3D space would have been on the Z. So we'll change this to vector two, vector two. And here's move horizontal, move vertical. So move vertical will be on the Y. Move horizontal will be on the left. This is uh, left and right. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and take this out because we're going to have to do something on the uh, rigid body. I'm also going to take the, the clamp stuff out because we're not doing that in, in this. We'll talk about clamp later on, but not in uh, this guy. So this is the direction of our movement, and we want to move at a certain speed. So... We're going to say make Nora move at the given speed in the correct direction and update animations accordingly. All right, so you'll have to get the direction up, down, left, right, and then decide if we're going up, we need to get the animation controller, tell Nora to change her animation to that one and, and all that stuff. Um, make some sense? Okay, so uh, I'll leave this like this and I'll go ahead and I'll paste this code in here as a, I'll put it into Slack so you have the starting point and that'll be due on Thursday and I'll go ahead and I'll put up the Bible homework as well. So I will see everybody on Thursday.